A well-designed chart can communicate data to your readers in just a couple of seconds. A good chart can make your arguments more persuasive, they can make your data more memorable, and overall they can just make it more engaging for your readers. But a poorly designed chart will do the opposite. Often, poor chart design just comes down to the fact that you're using the wrong type of chart for the data that you want to visualize. In this episode of Infographics 101, I'm going to show you the best types of charts to use for your data, and I'm also going to give you some chart design best practices that you can apply to virtually any chart you create. Let's get started. Hi there, my name is Sarah and I'm the blog editor over at Vengage. At Vengage, our goal is to help people visualize their ideas using infographics, charts, and more. I'm going to be giving you a lot of information in this video, but don't worry. We've compiled all of these tips, plus a ton of beginner-friendly templates that you can use in the blog post that I will link to in the description box below. But before we dive in, please subscribe to Vengage so that you never miss any of our helpful design guides. Before you dive into creating a chart, you need to determine what the goal of your chart will be, because that goal will help you pick the best type of chart to visualize your data. But that goal needs to be something more than just make my data interesting. At Vengage, we've developed a method for picking the best type of chart for your data, and we call that method the i -Core method. i -Core stands for inform, compare, change, organize, reveal relationships, and explore. I'm going to walk you through each letter in i -Core and make recommendations for the best types of charts for visualizing that goal. First, inform. Do you have a message that you wanna really hit your readers over the head with? Some important key data that you wanna make sure that they don't miss and that they remember? The easiest way to do this is to create a font focus chart that uses big, bold, colorful fonts to highlight the key data. Font focus charts like this are perfect for sharing on social media, in blog posts, in presentations, and anywhere that you really want your data to make an impact on your readers. You can use visuals like shapes or icons in this type of chart to help drive the point home and to help reinforce the message. For example, you could use an arrow to indicate growth or decline in your chart. If you want to visualize proportions, you could use an icon chart. In an icon chart, the color fill on the icons represent different numbers. You could also use a similar type of chart called a pictogram. In a pictogram, icons are used to represent different units or numbers. For a chart like a pictogram, it's good to stick to round numbers like 10 or 100 so that the data is easy to understand. If you aren't familiar with pictograms, we actually have a great guide that shows you how to use them and also includes a ton of templates to get you started. I'll link to that in the description box as well. Okay, the next i -Core goal is compare. If you want to compare similarities and differences between things, then there's a ton of different chart types that could work. You can use a bar chart or a column chart to compare values. The difference between a bar chart and a column chart is that the bars in a bar chart run horizontally and the bars in a column chart run vertically. Generally speaking, bar charts and column charts are the most reliable type of chart that you can use to compare data. In fact, a study conducted by data visualization experts found that bar charts were one of the easiest types of charts for people to decode. I'll link to that in the description box if anyone's interested in reading the study. Bar charts and column charts can pretty much be used interchangeably. The only time that it would be better to use a column chart is if you want to show changes over time. Meanwhile, bar charts are good for if you want to add long detailed labels to your bars because they afford you enough space to do that. Now, if you want to compare independent values with clear outliers, then a bubble chart is a great way to do that. Bubble charts are really fun. In a bubble chart, values are represented by the area of a circle as opposed to the length of a bar, like in a bar graph. Now, generally speaking, people aren't so good at judging the area of a circle. So that's why bubble charts should really only be used when there are very clear outliers that you want to draw attention to. As always, you should also make sure to clearly label your bubble charts so that it's apparent right away what people should be taking away from the chart. Now to compare parts of a whole, you could use a pie chart. 
Now, there's some debate in the data visualization field about whether or not you should be using a pie chart. And one of the main criticisms is that pie charts can potentially skew your data. But there are some pie chart design best practices that you can follow to help prevent your data from being skewed. We recommend ordering your pie chart segments from greatest to least, starting at 12 o'clock and then working your way around the circle clockwise, and limiting yourself to no more than seven segments in a pie chart. It's also important to note that pie charts do have their limitations. For example, they're not ideal for comparing compositions of multiple values. In that case, a stacked bar chart or column chart would work a lot better. The third goal is change. So let's say that you want to show trends or changes over time and space. The most common types of charts that you've probably seen to visualize this type of data are line charts and area charts. Generally speaking, line charts are the most effective type of chart to show trends and changes over time and space because they allow you to fit many data points into one chart and they allow you to show multiple data series. Similarly, you can also create area charts. While area charts can be a bit more interesting to look at, they also require a little more finesse to create. As a rule of thumb, you should use no more than four data series in one area chart. You should also ensure that the areas are transparent so that you can easily see the graph lines underneath. If you want to visualize events over time, you can use a timeline infographic. Timeline infographics are great for telling stories visually and for showing the steps in a project or a process. We actually have a video that walks you through the nine different types of infographics that you can create. I'll link to that up in the corner. Now let's say that you wanted to show changes or trends over a certain location. To show location data, you can use a choropleth map. Choropleth, choropleth map. That is Always a mouthful. Okay. A choropleth map uses shades to show different values. For example, population density. If you want to show changes in location data, then you can use a series of choropleth maps to do that. All right, the next goal is organize. There are a bunch of different ways that you can organize your data visually. You can show groups, ranks, patterns, and order. The first is a simple numbered list. A numbered list is a great way to rank or order textual or linear information. And the nice thing about a numbered list is you can really dress it up and make it really visually engaging for social media, presentations, or the classroom. You could also use a table to organize values. A simple table comes in handy for when you want your readers to see individual numbers or if your data set contains a number of different units. Now, the only thing is that tables can be a little boring to look at. That's why you can use colors to highlight different sections, bold fonts for your headers, and simple graphics like icons to help reinforce your data. Another way to group your information together and to show where different groups overlap is to use a Venn diagram. Venn diagram, Venn gauge, you get it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and you can use a mind map to show the relationship between different groups of information and individual pieces of information. Typically, a mind map will start with one central idea and then have different supporting ideas branching out from it. Okay, the second last goal in i is reveal relationships. So there are two key types of relationships that you will probably want to visualize with a chart and that is correlation and distribution. Let's say you want to show the relationship between two variables like age and height or month and weather. A scatter plot is the most reliable type of chart to do this. Scatter plots are handy because they allow you to show the raw data, which helps prevent your data from being skewed by your chart. Meanwhile, if you want to show the distribution of a single variable, you could use a histogram. A histogram is a type of chart that shows data by using bars of various heights. You've most likely seen a histogram used to show age demographic data, but you can use histograms to show all types of data distributions. And the last goal in i is explore. This is when you want your readers to be able to drill down on the data themselves and to draw their own conclusions. That's why if the goal of your chart is to allow your readers to explore the data, you'll probably want to create a chart that is interactive. 
Now, interactive charts require more work, but they can be a great asset for including in blog posts or on microsites. With Vengage, you can create charts and then embed interactive versions of those charts that allow your readers to drill down on different aspects of the data. You can find all of our chart templates at this link. I'll include the link in the description box below. Okay, now that we have gone through the different i goals, I'm gonna give you some quick fire chart best practices that everybody should be using. These best practices will help make sure that your data won't be skewed and that your charts will be easy to understand. The first tip is to start your chart axes at zero. Starting your chart axes at a number other than zero can cause your data to be distorted. This is called axis truncation. If you do have to start your chart axes on a number other than zero, then A, have a good reason for it, and B, make sure that the intervals between the ticks on your chart are consistent. This will help prevent your data from being skewed. You may have heard of the data visualization guru, Edward Tufte. He coined the term data ink ratio to emphasize the importance of minimalism in chart design. Basically, the most noticeable colors in your chart should be used to highlight the data. Along with that tip comes our third tip, which is to use color for function, not for decoration. When it comes to making charts, function, not fashion, comes first. To avoid things getting messy, limit yourself to no more than six colors in a given chart. The fourth tip is to never forget labels, legends, and annotations. When it comes to charts, labels are your friends. People need to know what they're looking at. This isn't abstract art, people. Use chart labels and headings to clearly state what you want your readers to take away from your charts. The fifth tip is to order your data logically. This might sound simple, but it bears repeating. Basically, you should present your data in the order that your readers expect. So, on a timeline infographic, you would want to make sure that your events are ordered from top to bottom or from left to right. And in a pie chart, you would want to make sure that your segments are ordered from biggest to smallest. And the final best practice is to keep it simple. You might be tempted to add a bunch of bells and whistles to your chart design, but practice restraint. If there's too much data or too many design elements on your charts, it can become really easy for your charts to be messy and confusing and for your data to be skewed, which is the opposite of what you want. Some rules of thumb to keep your charts in check is to use less than six lines in a line chart, less than 10 bars in a bar chart, and less than seven segments in a pie chart. But if you have a ton of data that you need to put in one chart, don't worry. One way that you can prevent your chart from looking cluttered is to use a bold color for the data and then to contrast that with a neutral background. And the bonus tip is to get a friend to look at your chart because they'll be able to tell you if it's confusing or not. Okay, that wraps it up for this video. If you have any questions about chart design or if there are any tips that we missed, please don't hesitate to share them in the comment section below. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so that you never miss any of our helpful design guides. For all of the chart and infographic templates that you saw in this video, plus a ton more, head on over to our templates library at vengage.com slash template. This is Sarah signing off. See you next time for another episode of Infographics 101 brought to you by Vengage.